If you were a child in Sparta, you would have to be strong, blessed with excellent genetics or a fast learner. Spartan children had a responsibility placed upon them at birth to serve Sparta, and in order to serve Sparta, you had to be strong and learn fast. The Spartan government was only interested in the best for the state, which meant that strong children were the only ones that would survive. Both baby girls and boys were put through initial tests to see if they were strong enough to be useful to the state. If a child did not pass these fitness or health tests, they would have to be left to die outside of main living area of the state, typically in the wild or in the mountains. Sparta was not a state to accept anything but the best, and this practice started at a young age. The seriousness of these traditions was held in a high regard, and all Spartan children would be checked. These Spartan elders were fastidious and regimented in their appraisal of the Spartan young. Elders would go as far as to wash a baby boy in wine, believing it would harden and strengthen the young one, to ensure that they would grow to be in line with the requirements the state needed to ensure ongoing strength. The treatment of boys and girls in Sparta was different, but they shared many similarities, something other Greek states could not. The Spartan way of life required that all boys and girls be strong, powerful, and capable. Education of the mind and body was deemed important for both genders, the Spartan girls and boys would have an opportunity to prove themselves worthy of membership. For Spartan girls, Spartan girls, like other boys, would live with their parents until the age of six or seven. After that, they would be required to attend a school of sorts. This attitude of educating girls was something rather unique about Sparta, but the girls would live, sleep, and exercise in their own living quarters. While in this stage of Sparta's girls would have many to learn many things and while documentation about exactly what spartan girls would learn is rare it's commonly thought that their education was almost an equal to that of the boys subjects they would study included poetry history drama reading and writing music and art among other subjects and would provide them with enough knowledge to give them a position no other woman in greece would experience at the time just like the boys, Spartan girls would be expected to be physically fit. A healthy woman would give birth to healthy babies. And when you think about this, it makes perfect sense. If the Spartans lived by this, the young Spartan girls would be allowed to exercise publicly outside with the Spartan boys, another rarity in ancient Greece, where most girls were not even allowed outside unless performing a chore or some description. Spartan girls would not even learn combat, how to fight, wrestle, and even gymnastic training, all of which would prepare them suitably should they ever need to defend themselves for Sparta. The next test in life for Spartan girls would occur when they turn 18, and their physical training would be key to them succeeding. At this age, Spartan girls would be tested for citizenship, and though this test was a mix of physical and mental testing, and allow them to prove their worth, and if successful, would become a citizen of Sparta. If the girl would fail her test, she would then not qualify to become a citizen and would be marked as middle class, which the Spartans would refer as perioikois. Once a Spartan girl had passed her test, she was now a woman, and all the benefits that were afforded to her from this were now available. For Spartan boys, once the boys had proven themselves to be fit to survive, they had much hardship ahead of them, but with all the purpose of ensuing that combined strength of Sparta. Up until the age of six to seven, Spartan boys would live with their parents, or their mother and maid, but all the while they would have the importance of the state of Spartan drummed into their psyche. Once they left home, the Spartan boys would join the public education of the state and their military training and become part of the agoge which was a Spartan method for instilling the values of Sparta. and their future warriors, it was here that they will live in shared quarters and assigned to a group. The education would be structured based on age, with the first age running from 6 to 7 to 17, and then from 17 to 20. Even after 20, the education would continue to age 29, 30, where a Spartan and learn and earn more freedom and rights as a citizen. In the first stage of Spartan, boys would move into their barracks, 
They would live with other Spartan boys of the same age. Their new home would be simple and sparse. In the second stage, the Spartan boys would now become reserve members of the Army of the State, however still not classified as men. They would only be called to battle in needed situations. This was also the other opportunities at this age for the Spartan boys, including being assigned to a special guard of secret police in the Spartan State. Third stage would now begin at age 20. Spartan boys would be voted into one of the existing public masses, and the existing members would continue until they would enter their mess. It was believed that the boys would have their next 10 years to earn acceptance into one of the available messes. The life of a Spartan child in summary. Life for a child in ancient Sparta was not easy. You would be expected to be strong from birth, otherwise you would not make it. For those that did survive, life would continue to be tough. But by the end of your training, boy or girl, you would be physically and mentally strong enough to be one of the most powerful members of the state in the ancient world.